Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Okay, guys, in July 4th, next month, marks 25 years for my wife and I that we came here to Hawaii to plant the church. And 25 years. And so it'll be our 25th anniversary of the church. We came here, and I called from Arizona because we had this guy visiting with these suspenders, this Gail Irwin preacher guy I told you about, the pastor to the pastors. He was speaking at our conference in Arizona, and I had heard from our one of the fellows in our church who was born and raised in Hilo, Hawaii, a place I had never been, on the other side of our island, by the way. This guy named Wally Takaki, one of our elders in our church, he said, he comes up to me and goes, you have to go to the big island. He walks up to me in the hallway of the church. You have to go to the big island and plant a Calvary Chapel. Now, Wally is like, first of all, he's like, one of those hapa blends, you know. He's like Japanese and Filipino or something. He's a small statured guy, super polite. Got that real soft spoken, not not Italian, okay? Don't, don't doesn't even know how to wave his arms. He's just like this. I mean, that he picked up his finger and pointed at me. This is a big hand gesture. You have to go to the big island. I'd be like, you gotta go. No, this is Wally, you gotta go. Okay? And and you gotta go. And then it's so soft, he says it, and, and, and because you're, you're chill, you'll, they can receive the gospel from you. And then he turned and he walked away. And I remember going to the Lord, Lord, you got to be kidding, what is wrong with Wally? You know, he says, I have to go to the big island, get, get, can you believe that God? And God goes, it's not him, dummy, it's me, I'm trying to get a message to you. Yeah, right, Lord, sure. So I go to men's prayer. On the Saturday morning men's prayer, we had, I said, guys, Wally says, I have to go to the big island. That's crazy. Isn't that crazy? We sh- but in case it's the Lord, should I pray about it? And the, thank God I was surrounded by men that were men of faith. They go, well, if it's the Lord, then you better, you better pay attention. And so I, 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 I go to the pastor's conference, and this guy, Gil Irwin, sitting there, and he said, um, you know, Gail, I, I called the Calvary Chapel Honolulu and I talked to the pastor, Bill Stonebreaker, and, uh, and he's been there like the longest, I think, in the islands out there serving the Lord, doing the Calvary Chapel style ministry. And, and um, I asked him about the big island. And he goes, funny you should ask. I can't get anyone to go to that island. As soon as he said that, I got my answer right then. I knew in my heart. Because God admired me too much with Star Trek too. But it wasn't because of Star Trek. It was because of what Paul said right here. That his aspiration was not to preach for Christ was already named, but to go, it's not to build on another man's foundation, to go lay a foundation of the gospel himself. He's like, I'll go. And as soon as Bill said, I can't get anyone to go there. That's so weird. You would ask about going to that island. I can get him to go to Maui. I can get him to go to Kauai. I just can't get him to go to the big island. And I was like, all right, Lord. But, you know, you got to get things confirmed, right? So I go to the pastor's conference. I'm like, he goes, and by the way, this guy, Gail Irwin, was just here preaching at our pastor's conference. And he says he thinks the time is ripe for for for." A, a Bible line upon line style preaching ministry like ours to, to go to the big island, to this place called Kona. I don't know Kona from Hilo. It's two dots on a map when you live in Arizona. Like, and it's like a little teeny little speck in the middle of the ocean when you look at it, you know? So I'm like, Kona, Hilo, I don't know. Lord, where do you want me to go? And Wally's from Hilo. Now, now that I've lived here, I know that's eight hours you know, I mean, it's an eight-hour drive around. The, I mean, it's, uh, well, it's a couple hours. Now we got Saddleback Road. It's much quicker. But it was a pretty long jaunt just to do the, around the horn either way, you know, three or four hours to, to get over there. And, and I'm like, Lord, where am I supposed to go? And I go to Gail. I said, Gail, I called this guy, Bill Stonebreaker, and he says that you said that you think the time is ripe for a ministry like ours to, to be planted on the Big Island. 
And um, this guy, Wally, and I'm pointing at Wally. He's over there at the pastor's conference. Like, see that little guy over there? The real mild man. He says, I have to go to the big island and start a work. What do you think? And where you have, oh, I, I got him at an opportune moment because everyone wants to bend his ear. I got him while we were eating pizza. <laughs> and he was up against the wall in the, uh, on the floor, just sitting there with his pizza, eating and listening so, like, pastorally, just nomming on his pizza. And he, look, he stops for one second. He goes, do it. And then he just goes back to eating his pizza. And I'm, like, waiting for, like, a, you know, big, long confirmation from God that I'm supposed to go to this place I've never been. And the Lord just gave me two words. Do it. And he goes, and then he, he took a few more bites, and he looked up from his pizza, he said, and if you do, I'll come visit you anytime I'm out there because I speak at this University of the Nations pretty often. And true to his word, every time he would speak at the University of the Nations, he'd call me up and we'd have him over to our church. We had just a little home fellowship. He'd, he'd come in. And, I mean, this guy draws big crowds. And he'd sit there and just teach us the word just so wonderfully about the Jesus style. How would Jesus do it? And, and man, it was just like, like a servant. He, it, it was just cool. And I go, well, Lord, you, you know, you directed me to just, you have this, the Lord has a way of directing us. Using things what, like, I had been to the Hawaiian Islands, but I, I came here as a young man doing gymnastics for ASU, competing. And it wasn't to this island. It was over to Oahu. And then my coach, he was pretty savvy. He'd be like, we need to have a clinic on Maui. Is, would you do a Palma Horse Clinic? I'm like, sure. Then a couple of us got to get on an island puddle jumper and go over to another island. So I got to be on the, on the, like, you know, instructional team that went over to do a clinic. And so I got to see a couple other islands. I was like, this is great. But I'd never seen this island. And the Lord goes, it's okay. Paul wanted to go where no one else had gone. You haven't gone there. You just go. I'm with you. And I went. And I, I, I read what Paul writes here, and it has a lot deeper, mm, well, it says a lot more to me now as an older believer than it did when I was young. Because before it just said, go where, you know, no one else has already gone. But then I read a little farther, and I, and I see his heart. He says, for this reason, verse 22, I have been prevented from coming to you, but now with no further no further place for me in these regions since I have had for many years a longing to come to you. Uh, for many years he's been wanting to go to Rome? Now, I don't know if any of you ever do this. This is, this is the, um, probably not the, the most, um, well, spent time on topic of Christian studying, but but Paul went on three missionary journeys. You guys know about these in the book of Acts? We get, we get um, a verbal like, accounting of these three missionary journeys in the book of Acts. And, and they're really interesting to read about. What's even more interesting to me is to figure out when did Paul write the letters that we have in the scriptures? Because we have, of the 27 books of the New Testament, 12 and some scholars say Hebrews he was probably in on but that's not proven because it's not signed okay so just just speculating on Hebrews but that's that's almost half the New Testament are attributed to this man and this man when I when I read about what he did you know when we think of going on a missionary journey my son has gone to the Philippines three times when he's a young boy he went with our assistant pastor Don to the Philippines to to help plan to work there but he went for a couple weeks. When I read the book of Acts, I'm like, how long did Paul go to the places he went? And oh, by the way, you know, you got to recall, there was no airplanes. How did he travel in these missionary journeys? We well, you know he went by boat, by these things, hooked to the bottom of our bodies, his little feet. Carried him for miles and miles. And the journeys, when you begin to study, and you, and you piece together, there's a, 
few clues that give us insight to you know different things like when did he write this book or from where did he write this book and he, he actually you have to pay really close attention but they're there and before I didn't give a rip but I'm getting older so I have more to think about you know I, I time is passing I'm thinking how old was this guy when he started doing these journeys when did he do them how long did they take I mean I'm going on almost 25 years here Lord how long did Paul spend in the mission field doing this? Now, by the way, when he writes to this letter, for any of you that like to know these little trivia things, he, Paul, Paul writes this letter to, to the church at Rome. He, he, um, we, we, actually, we actually know where he's writing from because of what he's about to tell us in this chapter. So I get to point out one of the clues. Some of you are like, how did you figure this stuff out? It's right in here. I'm not making it up. But you've got you to gotta pay attention to the little details. And then there's other things that we can study in church history to line up dates, you know, and things that we know that were written in the, the Romans kept, you know, they had, they had little scribes. They got these recorders that recorded the history. We know about who was ruling at what time, what the date was in those times. And they adopted the, the, the Julian calendar with A.D., B.C. This makes it really easy for us Christians because it starts it off at Christ's birth, right? And just forwards us through. And most historians peg Paul's birth to be 8 A.D. So when Jesus was 8 years old, Paul was a baby. Now this kind of helps me because I'm like, okay, wait a minute. I know there's this, there's this council of Jerusalem in Acts 15. And the, and, and the Romans wrote a little note that that was in 49 A.D. And I know Paul attended that council. Because he brought word back to the council saying, the Gentiles are included in God's plan of salvation. And that, that like kind of really ruffled everybody's feathers. They were like, no. He's like, no, yeah, yeah, they are. It's, you know, and, you, and by the way, I've been out there in the mission field. Now, does anyone know? Paul had gone on only one missionary journey, his first one. And just to clue you in, it was before that. So we know it's before 49 A.D. There's a few little hints that tell us it's, it's, it's three years. It's three. This is what, this, now I'm getting really old and mulling over life. He was on that journey for three years, that first journey. What we think of as like, oh, you go for a couple of weeks, you go see the Mediterranean region, you know. He only went over to an island. And then Crete, and he goes, oh, you know, he goes, he's with Barnabas. He's like, hey, Barney, look, let's share the gospel with the people that, that don't get to hear. Okay, where should we go? You know the first place they go? I don't know if you've paid attention to the little map in the back of your Bible. Some of you have this little map that says the journeys of Paul, the apostle, first missionary journey. It's got like a little colored line where it traces him, you know, zigzagging around. They go to Barnabas' hometown. It's an island. And then from there, oh, well, let's go up there, and then over there. And, and they go around, and, but what they don't tell you is it took three years of preaching. Three years. I, I never thought about this. Three years of time. Then he comes back, 49 AD, and he tells, he tells this great news. Guys, the Jews, we're not the only ones. That really went over like a lead balloon. God wants to include the Gentiles. And then he goes, we ought to go back and visit all the churches what, what we already planted. This will be fun. Except that this journey is going to take him, his second journey, two more years. Except that as he's going around to... The, now, if I'm just I'm summing up a lot of scriptures to tell you this part of the story. I'm, I'm like compressing all the book of Acts together just to give you this little insight about Paul. He goes with, and he's, he's about to take Barnabas, and they had taken this young man named John Mark. You guys heard of him in the scripture? Barnabas' nephew. He's attributed the gospel of Mark, by the way. So you might have heard Matthew, Mark, Luke, John in the Bible. The first. Anyway, they, they, Mark, when they had taken off on the first journey, he was with them as a young boy. But he got scared. He got homesick. You guys remember this in Acts? So what did Mark do? 
You're like, can I go home? I don't want to do this anymore. It's a long time. I'm, I miss mommy. You know, I don't know what he did. But whatever he did, really, Paul didn't like it too much because when, when Paul said, let's go back and visit the churches, Barnabas says, yeah, well, let's take John Mark with us. He's a little older now. Paul like, no way. That traitor, he abandoned us. I ain't taking that little whiny, sniveling guy. And I'm just interjecting this. You didn't see that in Acts, did you? It says there was a dispute which arose amongst them over John Mark. And Barnabas, the dispute was so great. It doesn't tell you all the sniveling, whiny stuff. I just made that up. I know they were disputing because it says they parted ways. Barnabas and Paul did not continue on the second missionary journey together like they intended. They divided. And there's, we would call this a missionary team split. It's kind of like a church split, but it's a missionaries. So they split, and John Mark goes with Barnabas on a journey, which they take off for, guess where the first place they're going? Back to Barnabas' island. You look on your missionary map there, the very first place that they went on the first journey, that's, that's Barnabas' hometown. They go for there. Well, Paul goes, well, we're not going to go there. And he gets Silas. Hey, you want to go with me? Yeah, I'll go with you. And he goes, so they take off from Jerusalem and go up the coastline on land and go all the way back up toward Greece walking. This takes a couple years to go visit that whole region when you're doing this on foot. And he gets, he gets almost to the end of visiting the, the circuit of churches, what they had already planted. And in chapter 16 of the book of Acts, would you turn there? I just want to show you this part. It ties into today's study. He gets to chapter 16... And it says that Paul, verse 30, uh, I'm sorry, this is 15, verse 36. He says, after some days, Paul said to Barnabas, let us return and visit the brethren in every city where we proclaim the gospel of the Lord's. And let's see how they are. In other words, the second missionary journey, his intention was just to kind of go follow up, follow up visit on the churches, what we already planted. And if you want to read I just summed up for you what happened. Barnabas wanted to take John Mark. Paul said, it kept insisting they should not take him because he had deserted them in Pamphylia so, and not gone on to do the work. So there, there occurred such a sharp disagreement, verse 39 of chapter 15 of Acts, that they, what does it say? Separated from one another. Barnabas took Mark with him and they sailed away to Cyprus and Paul chose Silas and left being committed by the brethren to the grace of God. And so he was traveling through Syria and Cilicia, and, uh, 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 no, Cilicia and, and he was strengthening the churches. And Paul came to Derbe and to Lystra, and there was a disciple there named Timothy. This is where Timothy gets introduced, Acts 16. He gets picked up in the, he's a son of a Jewish woman, but his father is what? Greek. By the way, were the Jews supposed to marry outside of their faith? No. So how well do you think Timothy fit in in the Jewish culture? Not at all. They, they would be like, you're worse than, you're, 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 like, you're like a Samaritan. By the way, the Samaritans, well, they came about as because a tribe of Israel got conquered and the conquering guys killed off the, the men of Israel of that tribe and then they went into the women and the children were half Samari you know, fr fr from the Syrian, so they became called Sam half-breeds, Samaritans. And Jesus, when he met the Samaritan woman, she goes, why are you talking to me? We're not supposed to talk together. Here's this guy, Timothy, a young man, same thing. He's got a, a Greek father and a Jewish mom. But Paul, Paul saw that he was well spoken of by the brethren at Lystra and Iconium. So Paul wanted to take this man to go with him. And he took him. And he circumcised him because there were Jews in those parts and, he, and they all knew that his father was a Greek. He didn't want them to give him a hassle. So poor Timothy, welcome to the club. You get circumcised. And while they were passing through the cities, they were delivering a decree which had been decided upon by the apostles and the elders that was that Acts, uh, that the, the Council of Jerusalem in, in uh, 49 A.D. 
And, and it says, and, and they were telling the churches to observe these things. And they went through these regions. And as they go on, they go all the way down to Troas. I, I, I'm skipping over a few verses, but just picture in the Mediterranean. They keep passing along the shoreline. They get all the way down, and they get to Troas. And in verse 9, a vision happens to Paul in the night. We'd call this a dream or, you know, night vision, you know. It says, and, and, and a man of Macedonia was standing on the shore, he was appealing to, to him, saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. This is a vision. He doesn't have a Wally Takaki telling him, you got to go. He just has a dream while he's on a journey. Can anyone tell me what he does? Don't look. No cheating. No looking down. Does he go to Macedonia? It's not a trick question. I'm just seeing who knows there. The answer is yes. He does. And it, says, and, and it says right here, when he had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go into Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. Now, this is farther than they went on the first missionary journey. So if you look at Paul's second missionary journey, you'll notice the line starts retracing the steps of where he went. And then all of a sudden, just one vision on the way. Just what, can God change your path or your intent? Can he direct your steps like, you, you got it all mapped out. We're going to go this way. We're going to go do this. And I'm going to take this person. And that falls apart. And you don't take that person. You want to take another person. Then you pick up another person and have him circumcised. And then you've got three of you going. And then you have a vision in the night. And the Lord uses this vision. Just a vision. Of a guy standing in Macedonia. Come over here. Help us. Now you look on the map. It's not like a little just jaunt. I mean, you've got to get on a boat and cross the sea or go way around the horn. And, and what do they do? It says, and concluding that this was the Lord calling them to preach, they put out to sea from Troas and ran a straight course to cemeteries. They got on a boat and followed the vision. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com, and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo, and God bless.